So last WMR, we took a look at a handful of Charizards that didn't do so well over this last year. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys a few more that's gonna go ahead and continue on with that trend. But we're also gonna take a look at a handful of Charizards that actually did exceptionally well. We're also gonna look at first edition base set in the PSA 10 to nine range to let you guys know how those cards are doing and what prices are looking like as of late. And it all starts right now. Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another weekly market recap where we're going to be looking at, you know, stats, highlights, prices of certain cards, kind of let you guys know what went up, what went down so you guys can stay up to date of what's going on in the Pokemon hobby. And kind of the big news as of late guys is that in the last PWCC auction block, we saw some really, really big ticket items come through. Uh, a couple of them were Charizards and in the last WMR, we talked about a lot of Zards that just didn't do very well over this last year. Some dropped by 50% even more and so I wanted to kind of show you guys the other side of the spectrum let you guys know what charizards have done very well over this last year uh, we're also going to show you guys a complete first edition psa 10 set that came through um, on pwcc as well except for one we're going to go ahead and take a look at that and we're also going to cover no rarities in next uh, episode so i want to kind of give you guys a baseline um, it's always kind of interesting to see uh, first edition or no rarity um, to see which one sells higher so we're going to go ahead and take a look at those and then lastly guys um we are almost at the point of getting monetized so if you guys are new to the channel or you know you've been here for a while and you guys are willing to watch this video you know the whole way through just to kind of support me to try to get to that milestone i don't think that i'm looking to make any money off of youtube but again it's just really cool to kind of have reached that milestone um so if you guys are open to that i'd, I'd so very much appreciate it and at the end if you guys enjoy the content uh like and subscribe is always appreciated all right guys so let's go ahead and jump right in all right guys so starting off with the only modern charizard that we're going to be covering in this video and that is the psa 10 charizard from the ultra premium collection box uh, only has a pop of 37 and PSA actually stopped grading these so it's going to kind of be interesting to see where these cards kind of go over the next you know few months um, but it started off hot and heavy back in November for 11,500 sold recently for 6,600 which is a 43% decrease uh, next up we have the BGS 10 Charizard the original base set uh, Japanese this one sold for about the same you know from last year um, I will try to give you guys the full year time frame uh, just so you guys have a baseline moving forward um, but yeah, this one only has a pop of 19 as compared to its PSA 10 counterpart, which I think is like over 500 at this point. So these don't come through too often and it's about holding the same price as last year. Next up, we have the legendary collection Charizard in PSA 10. So a 24% decrease coming in at 11,400. Next up, we had the Exposition Charizard in PSA 10. This saw a 22% drop coming in at $16,800. And although it dropped by 22%, it actually still sold for more than its Skyridge e-reader counterpart, uh, which sold for $16,200. Now, I think that it's interesting, um, if anything, this goes to show, you know, how much uh, collectors value the Skyridge artwork, because this has a pop of 209, Expedition only has a pop of 35. So, you know, people love their Skyridge. Uh, the Crystal Charizard is probably, you know, up there in regards to like top three artworks of all time. Some people would consider it the best looking Charizard of all time. And so even though it has a lot more supply out there, it is still selling at around the same price point of a much lower pop uh, Charizard. So kind of interesting to kind of see that, but it is good to see the Expedition Charizard getting a little bit of love. Uh, and then lastly here, guys, for the uh, ones that have, you know, kind of dropped over this last year, we had the Reverse Hollow. Uh, Crystal Charizard from Skyridge in a PSA 10. So a 23% drop coming in at $3,840. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the Charizards that actually increased over this last year. And we're starting off with a beautiful low pop gem coming in at just a pop of 14. Uh, and that is the Legendary Collection Regular Hollow Charizard. This one saw a 20% up uptick coming in at $24,000. Nice big ticket item right there. Uh, next up, we had the uh, Evolutions Charizard in a PSA 10, and this sold for about the same price, $17,400 as last year. 2% uh, bump, but nothing too crazy. Uh, next up, we had the DP45 Charizard Level X, again, another low pop gem. And this is one that's going to kind of uh, raise a few eyebrows. I know it has on Instagram already. This one sold for $21,000 um, as of late in the last PWCC auction block which is a 289% uptick from back in December of 2020. So a little bit over a year ago. Um, and a lot of people were talking about this card was shield. But at the end of the day, this showed up in PWCC's archive section, meaning that it was sold for by somebody. So unless PWCC is uh, buying their own cards, which is a whole nother story, not going to get into the conspiracy theories. This one was paid for by a buyer. 
Uh, another one that was uh, talked about in regards to shilling. Um, another tough one to grade, um, only has a pop of 81, and that is the Secret Rare Charizard from Plasma Storm. This one sold for $18,000, which is a 125% increase. We had the Reverse Hollow Charizard from Power Keepers. Uh, reverse Hollows from the EX Air have just gone up so much over this last year. Um, this one saw a 140%, 147% uptick, coming in at $11,100. Nice bump for that card. Uh, next up, we had the regular Hollow from EX Crystal Guardians. Some beautiful side tile artwork. This one saw a 93% uptick, coming in at $7,800. And then we also have uh, another one that just saw some some really good growth. Uh, the Charizard, the Secret Rare from Stormfront. You know, Diamond and Pearl has been getting a lot of love lately, and I really like this one because, as you can tell, it looks very similar to the original reprint without it being an actual reprint. So they kind of did something different. And again, it is a Secret Rare, so it's really tough to pull. This one only has a pop of 46 and coming in at $18,600. Very nice. This one had me baffled, guys. Out of anything, this one I just didn't understand. So if you guys have any insight on this card, please let me know. Um, but this is just a regular non holo Charizard from Supreme Victors. Um, sold for $2,520, which is a 620% uptick from last year, which is just mind boggling uh, to me. This one isn't super low pop. I don't know if this artwork is just very tough to find nowadays and it's just, you know, um, the other, you know, 96 are just sitting in people's collections or what. So again, if you guys have any insight, that just seems like a really big price point for a non holo Zard. So let me know. And then lastly here, guys, um, ending on a very iconic artwork and that is the Gold Star Charizard from EX Dragon Frontiers and a PSA 10. This one saw a 41% uh, uptick coming in at $27,600 and I definitely feel, and again this is just my feelings not financial advice, that this card definitely has a lot more room to grow, especially on the PSA 10 side. Um, fairly low pop, it's a Charizard, it's a Gold Star, it's a Shiny. Um, I just don't see a lot of you know, sealed product getting uh, open. The packs are like at least $500 roughly, blisters potentially even more. So I don't see that there's going to be a whole lot more um, cards entering into the population. Maybe in the PSA 7 to 9 range that will continue to grow, you know, over the next couple years. But in regards to the PSA 10s, I don't see that this card growing very uh, much in regards to population. So I do think that this card has kind of all the fundamentals in regards to seeing, you know, um, a upwards trend. Um, so we're going to continue to keep an eye on it. Alrighty guys, up next, getting into the first edition, um, you know, base set, and we're starting off with the big boy, the big green toad. This one's finally getting some love, uh, big Venu. This one sold for $30,000 recently. As you can see, it was selling for $10,000 last year, which was about the same price as an unweighed pack, um, which just didn't make any sense at all. One of the big three, you know, such an iconic Pokemon. Uh, this one's like 200% grow, so good to see, you know, Venusaur getting some love. Uh, next up, Blastoise. This one to me, again, just uh, my feelings, seems a bit underrated at this point. You know, out of the big three, you kind of have Venusaur, then Blastoise, then Charizard. Um, in regards to popularity, if the Charizard is selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars and the Venusaur is selling for about the same price point, only $600 less, you would think that the Blastoise would be a little bit higher up in the tier in regards to price. Um, let me know you guys' thoughts. You guys think that Blastoise is, um, you know, accurately price or do you guys think that um, it's a little bit undervalued at this point but anyways uh, coming in at a pop hundred and selling for about the same price as last year um, a little bit of a drop there four uh, percent next up we have the uh, very iconic low pop Chansey um, you know everybody knows this card is the low pop because of you know Logan Paul's girlish you know scream when he pulled it in his first box break <laughs> And you know what, um, a lot of people knew that it was low pop before that, but you know, the stigma has, you know, really helped this card, you know, drive up its price. You know, coming in at just a pop 48, this one sold for more than the Blastoise and the Venusaur, coming in at $31,800, and for good reason. 16% um, uptick, beautiful artwork, gotta love it. Speaking of low pop, here's the Hitmonchan, one of my personal favorites from the set. Uh, this is the second lowest pop um, card in the set. Uh, coming in at just pop 56. This one sold for $13,200, which is an 18% decrease. 
And then we had the Polyrath, and this one just didn't sell for too much, only 6,300. I think that that's a really good value buy at this point in time. Uh, coming in at Pop 99, this one saw like 36% drop from last year. We had the Alex Zam, such a beautiful card. Um, classic Sugomori artwork, that purple just pops on cards. Absolutely love it. This one saw about a 40% uptick coming in at $14,400. We also had the Clefairy in a PSA 10, so a 64% growth coming in at $12,000, so really good movement on that card. We had the Gyarados, kind of a fan favorite, uh, didn't get too much love this go around. Uh, saw a 37% decrease coming in at $8,700. We also had the Magneton, which is the third lowest pop card from the set, and this is getting a little bit more attention as well. This one saw a 60% uptick coming in at $12,600. We had the Machamp, and you can see that this card is, you know, much lower priced than the other ones, and for good reason. Take a look at that population, 372 copies in PSA 10s. That's quite a bit different from, you know, the rest of them. Most of them are under 100, uh, but this one still saw a 23% growth from last year, so Machamp getting a little bit of love. Now for this one, this one's going to be kind of interesting, guys. We had the Mewtwo. This one that sold was a thin stamp. Um, this one saw a 7% uptick coming in at 16,200. Now the one that sold back in uh, 122820, 20, so a little bit over a year ago, back in December. Um, this one sold for $15,100 and that was a thin stamp as well. But if you actually take a look at the next listing here on uh, PWCC, another one sold that same day. And again, it showed up on PWCC archive, so it was paid for. And it was a thick stamp and that thick stamp actually sold for $20,100. So if we kind of compare the two, um, that would be a 19% drop uh, if we were kind of looking at it from that standpoint. But again, this one that did sell this go around was a thin stamp. so. It's kind of interesting to see the, the price differences. I was looking at the condition of the cards. Nothing that stood out to me. Um, no obvious print lines or centering issues or whitening on the back of the card. So uh, I know that a lot of people do prefer thick over thin. So it's just kind of an interesting you know, uh, data point to kind of look at. Uh, next up, the Nidoking. King. One of my personal favorites, probably a top five in the set for me, but not a lot of love from the rest of the Pokemon community. This one sold for only $6,600. Not too high. Um, think again, a nice little value buy for the first ever you know, set at the highest grade for PSA. This one saw a 35% decrease. Um, we also had the Ninetales, saw a 13% decrease coming in at $12,600. We had the, the Raichu looking like you just ate some Taco Bell, um, the Pop Belly Raichu. This one sold for uh, $10,200, which is a 66% drop. And then we had the Zapdos. And again, this one I just find very interesting. It is, um, you know, one of the three original legendary birds. And this is the only legendary bird that came into, you know, the first set, the base set. And yet it's selling for... Um, the second lowest price, you know, you have that Machamp that's, you know, selling for much less. And then you have the Polyrath and the Zapdos that are selling for 6300 you know, this last go around, this last auction block. So I just find that interesting that, you know, not a lot of people really care for this artwork and it kind of always has sold on the lower end in regards to price. Um, but yeah, this one sold for 6300 and so a 48% decrease. And then lastly here, guys, we have the PSA 9 Charizard. This is the only one that didn't sell on a PSA 10, you know, recently. And this one sold for $23,200. That sounds like a big number for a PSA 9. But when we look at it compared to last year, that is a big drop, 45% decrease. And, you know, that number of, you know, about $40,000 you know, it kind of just makes sense that it would drop. I mean, you look at how many people can spend $40,000 on a card. If this was a very low pop, it would make sense that, you know, every time one would come through auction, that maybe there was another buyer out there that, you know, really wanted this card that can pay for it. But when you have almost 700 copies floating around, it's not like this comes through, you know, every week or even every month on, you know, auction or is up for sale. But that's a lot of copies to be consistently trying to be selling at that $40,000 mark. It just makes sense that this card would drop just due to population so we're going to kind of keep an eye on it you know moving forward to kind of see where it goes from here Alrighty, moving into the black labels of the week we had the um black label charizard v max from shining fates this one sold for two thousand nine hundred dollars we had the uh junior stamp rally promo the ev promo uh big ticket item came through five thousand one hundred dollars nice little price point for that cute little ev 
And then we also had um, the ultra modern promo, uh, one that's you know very talked about. You know, a beautiful Arita artwork. This one sold for seven thousand one hundred dollars uh, to me. And again, just my opinion, just seems a little bit overpriced at this point in time. There's so many of these cards out there right now, guys, that are either currently being graded, waiting to be graded at a lower price point, um, or ones that are just sitting minty fresh in a box. It's not very easy to get a BGS black label. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that anyone that are gonna be graded have a really good chance at it, but when you think of all the supply out there, there's gonna be uh, more copies that come through of this card. There's no doubt in my mind. So I think that this buyer just really, really wanted this card again. It is a beautiful, beautiful artwork by a very iconic uh, illustrator in the hobby. And you know, definitely gonna be uh, kind of keen to see where this card goes uh, from here. Alrighty guys, that's it for today's video. As always, really appreciate the feedback in the comment section down below. I love engaging with you guys. If you guys are new to the channel and you enjoyed today's content, you know, we're on the road to 2K subs and we can't do it without you guys and we'd love to have you on board. Um, my phone decided to not record this last section, so just wanted to get back in and just say thanks for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one. See ya.